Good day, and welcome to Lesson 46 in our study of the Book of Romans. Today we're going to complete chapter 12, a chapter in which Paul is telling us really how if we really believe in Christ and in what he did for us, then we will be grateful to present ourselves as living sacrifices to him. And this really means that we will, one, follow him, that we will use any talents that we have for his good, that we will love one another. The, the second part of, the, of this ending of the chapter tells us that we are to love without hypocrisy. Brotherly love, giving for preference to one another. This is primarily written to people within the church itself. And that we are to be of one mind we are to do this, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. So this is really the first of us to use our talents, second of us to love each other in brotherly love within the church itself. And now the third thing really is to love others outside the church. And this is what how this chapter really finishes off. He says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, be of the same mind towards one another. This was addressed to the people within the church itself, primarily. But now he's off saying, saying, do not set your mind in high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends upon you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, say the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will reap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The main premise of this is, do good to others. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And this is not new. Back in the back in the book of Matthew, Matthew wrote again this way that you have heard it was said of you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute, persecute you. This was in Matthew 5, verses 38 to 45. 1 Peter 3 also puts it this way. He says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. What Paul is really saying in this is that people who love God, who love Christ, who are followers of him, will try as best they can to love everyone and not necessarily repay an evil deed with an evil deed. There, was, there were two families in the United States called the Hatfields and McCoys, which I'm sure many of you have heard about. And this was a feud that went on for years over some incident that happened when one insulted or did something to the other and the second family repaid the first with a further insult or a further type of inju insult in injury. And this went on, went on for generations. The two families really getting along, not at all, but not really knowing anymore what the real reason for the dispute was. 
And this, what, this is what happens when people repay evil with evil. If you can avoid that, it's going to make a short, a short stay of any kind of evil thought or evil deed that might occur. And this is what he's saying, repay no one evil for evil. Repay them with good instead. Every regard for good things in the sight of all men. The good things in the sight of God is one thing, and that is important. But having good things in the sight of men is also important, because it, it, it is other men that see how we live. If it is possible. Now, it also means that not all things are possible. It says if it is, if it is as possible, live peaceably with all men. But we can see from what, what's going on around us in the world that it's not possible to live peaceably with all men. That's why this is put in here, if it is possible. But the big thing is to put it upon ourselves. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably. You do your part. Sometimes your part is not enough. Sometimes the part, the part of one side is not sufficient. But do what you can, and if it is all possible, live peaceably with all men. If, if we all did that to the best of our abilities, the world would be a, an entirely different place in which to live. So he says, if it is possible, as much as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. This giving place to wrath refers to the fact that if someone is wrathful or angry or, or evil against you, let them have their say. Don't, re, don't re, do a rebuttal, because get, give them place for their wrath. Give place to wrath, for it is said that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. This goes all the way back to the to Deuteronomy and to and to uh, the Book of Leviticus in the in the in the, the Old Testament. It says in, in thirty five in the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter uh, thirty thirty two, verse thirty five, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things to come hasten upon them. This is, this is what God is saying about people who have problems, who take out wrath against his people. Is this not laid up in store with me, steeled up among my treasures? Vengeance is mine and recompense. Back in the book of Leviticus, it also refers to this back in Leviticus 19, verse 18. Uh, and it says, You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your lives... You, you shall uh, keep my statutes. You shall not bow your seat with another next seat, not a garment of mixed them. Whoever lies, who, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin... I, sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall keep my statutes. So this, these were ordinances that were done way back in the very start of the Bible, that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And this is what he's saying here, that do not repay evil with evil, do not give place to wrath, do not let your anger be aroused in response to anger against you, but let the person have their say, give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing so you will reap coals of fire on his head. It's Beth in Proverbs 25, 
21 to 22, it says this, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so, for so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The Lord will have the vengeance. Show patience. Show restraint. Do not repay evil with evil. And this really is, is, is this part in this part of Romans is really a quotation or a paraphrase of these proverb 25. Everyone is, everyone is a problem. Everyone is not perfect. Therefore we all have issues that we shouldn't have, that we should regret, that we must repent over. And if we can understand this and give some people the ability to vent a bit on their own without reacting, then it will make things a lot easier in the long run. It says in Isaiah 53 that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. But there's always growth in the believer. And that growth will continue. If there is no growth, there is no life. That last statement comes from Donald Gray Barnhill himself. We are to trust in God. We are to trust in His precepts and in, and in His principles. It says in Proverbs 3, 8, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and bear not in your own understanding. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. So this is what he is really saying here. Go in the way of God. God. Let God direct your path. And if you do that, then you will tend to repay evil with good. You will tend to not hate those who hate you, but you will tend to repay them with kindness rather than with some kind of evil. And this is really the end result of this entire chapter. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not let evil, do not let anger, do not let bad judgment, do not let impulsivity take over what you do. But let it be somewhat, let yourself be somewhat quiet and reflect and try to repay as best as possible whatever people do against you, repay them with evil. Or repay them with good, sorry. Whatever evil people do against you, repay them with good. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And let the Lord take vengeance. By doing this, you will sometimes enable God, and the enemy will have more problems because of what God does than anything you could possibly do. So do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that really ends this chapter. So, just remember these ways that it is, it is made for us to act as good Christians. These are talents for Him. Do not dispute with each other in the church. Try to find the best in each other and try to be humble towards one another. And at the same time, be humble and not aggressive against people who are who pretend to be or seem to be your foes. Repay them good for any evil they may give to you. And in the long run, your life, your life will be better and their lives may be changed. This is all the result and all the message of this part of chapter 12. So next week we'll get into chapter 13 and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and bye for now.